We talk fantasy, the fantasy football podcast here on Guys of the Media. We're going to be talking running backs in this edition before we get into the guys who get the ball, score a lot of touchdowns for your fantasy team. We want to tell you about the people that make this show possible. Like Lily and David Fine Jewelers, if you're going for the fantasy football championship season, you want to rock one of those rings. And before you do it, make sure you take care of your wife, your fiance, your girlfriend. If you're sitting down for a four or five hour fantasy draft with your buddies, take care of her before you do it. Stop over to Route 50, the shops of Wilton. And find exactly what she's looking for. Whatever it might be. Something that fits her style, her fashion. Maybe a new pair a new pair of earrings. Some jewelry. For some of you, maybe it's time to make that girlfriend the fiance. Pop the question. That's where I bought my engagement ring. You can do the same for yourself. Family owns an operated business. So you support some great people when you do that. Alyssa and David are the absolute best. If you've got a group of friends and some of those guys are strangling a little bit about popping the question. Tell them you heard about it. We talk fantasy. Go in there, support our guys from Fantasy Football, Chet, Kyle, Gaz, and support Lily and David Fine Jewelers. Say hello to Alyssa and David when you buy that engagement ring or whatever it might be for her. Lily and David Fine Jewelers, Route 50, the shops of Wilton, where they are the best. They're the best. We love Lily and David Fine Jewelers. All right, running back position. We're going to talk about the top, overrated, underrated, sleepers, deep sleepers, bust, however you want to classify it. Let's start at the top. Chat, we're going to let you lead this one off. Who is the number one running back for you in the year of 2022? I want it to be different. I wanted to go out on a limb. Um, if I have number one in a complete redraft league, I'm taking Jonathan Taylor. Um, and usually you're, you want to find that guy that is the best combination if you're playing in any sort of PPR, whether it's full point or half point, you know, the value of having a pass catching running back in years past CMC unanimous. Number one, Saquon Barkley was there. JT doesn't do a lot of work in the passing game, but his rushing ability is just uh, it's elite, you know, and, and we saw the consistency of the hundred yard games and almost guaranteed one touchdown, usually two, even if there's a slight regression there, um, there's no warning signs and that's where the guys behind him, I think have that injury prone, you know, Derek Henry got hurt last year. Um, Cal Dalvin cook's been hurt. CMC has been hurt for two years. We don't have that with JT. He was a workhorse in college. He's a workhorse in the NFL. He's going to be a workout horse this year. So I think it's just, a, it's a safe play. Um, I think you're guaranteed a top five finish out of JT, and there's a good chance he repeats number one. Even though I've seen all these videos on Instagram saying he doesn't meet the requirement and there hasn't been a re repeat running back champion like, what, eight of the last nine years? So I get it. Recent history says it's not going to happen. I just think he's the safest play for number one. You, 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 whoa. iPad. Hi. Bye. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, you can't – I can't argue. It's Jonathan Taylor. I, I was with chat. I I just said on the quarterback on the quarterback episode um, how high it was on the Vikings, and I want to make a case for Dalvin Cook because I I love Dalvin. He has very similar breakout tendencies that Jonathan Taylor does. That and he's a little bit of a better pass catcher. The only downside is he's injury prone, um, so it's really hard. And then you want to throw Derrick Henry in there because we literally said it last year how much we disrespect King Henry. Um, but that team got way worse th this offseason. And I mean much, much worse. So um, I don't feel good about Henry. I would love to put Najee Harris up there, but very similar to Tennessee. What else is there in that place? And I'm not even going to touch Christian McCaffrey and Austin Eckler because I don't think that neither of those guys have what some of those other guys' potentials could be. So um, to exactly all Chet's point, it's, it's Jonathan Taylor. Um, it's It's a really good – uh, offensive line. It's a really good situation in terms of the offense that they run. Um, and then we'll see what the pass game looks like, but it has to be Jonathan Taylor. If you are picking anybody else at number one, you're wrong. Hey, there's just no real other option. Taylor's the answer. The schedule is so soft for the Colts. Like this is another team from the real NFL world where you look at their setup and I know Matt Ryan is old fast. Like he stunk last year for Atlanta. They're just going to hand Taylor the rock. No T.Y. Hill, a free agent in Chicago. What are you doing? Call him. Like, you have no wide receivers. Why aren't you calling? I guess he's five foot eight. Call T.Y. Hill. But Jonathan Taylor is the answer. It is my worst take in We Talk Fantasy from last time. Where I said <laughs> that's the most overrated, overhyped running back going into 2022. 
I should buy you guys beers for how bad the take was. The answer is Jonathan Taylor. One, three for three. We all agree on that. All right. God's, God's got a little choppy, but I think we got the point. I think we got the point that it's uh, it's JT three for three. Yep. All right. Who wants to do their first overrated pick? I will because I think mine's a little hot take. Ooh. Because I'm keeping this guy. Oh, my gosh. I picked him too. Are you serious? <laughs> I swear. I don't want to give you all my things away. Yeah, Austin Eckler is my very much overrated. Uh, there it is, here. Austin Eckler. Yep, and yeah, I'm dude. I'm proud of you, Kyle. I'm proud that, of you. I mean, here's the thing: I have Austin Eckler as a fourth round pick. You have to keep him as, as yes. a fourth round pick. No, no, like, no. That's, it's an overrated. But the love that he's in the elite tier, I think, oh, is is way too far. I would take. I prefer Najee. I prefer Henry. I prefer Mixon over Eckler currently. A um, couple reasons being. Um, he's not a true three down back. He can't be a true three down back. He, he struggles in the pass protection game when he's in for passing downs, he's not blocking. He's going out for a route. So you know that that's what he's doing. Um, he's significantly undersized, which obviously we know what kind of runner and explosiveness he has. Um, but the problem is he now has a backfield where there's noise. Um, he's shown that he didn't need to be, he wasn't the only guy in that backfield late in the year, um, when he got hurt. There's also some of the ankle concerns for, for Austin Eckler. So I love Austin. I think when he's healthy and if he could establish himself as a three down back and he could improve his pass blocking, he would be up there in the league tier. But him getting this much love is a little concerning. Um, and then how much is that team going to run? They are in an obliteration of a schedule, 26th strength of schedule this year. They're going to be in dogfights. They're going to be throwing the ball, which in a PBR league might help him because he's going to get probably five targets a game you make it five to five to nine points out of the pass game if you're lucky but i think some of his running uh potentials are going to be very much limited uh, based on how they're going to have to play their offense so uh, austin Eckler is definitely my pick for the most overrated so far this year yeah i'm just gonna really say ditto i think kyle nailed it on the head it's just like when i was trying to find an overrated player i tried to focus on the top 10 like who in there did not belong and i think eckler does I just don't think – I think he's, he's just too high. There are guys mm-hmm. behind him that I feel better about their situations. I feel better about being the guy. And, and if Eckler is that, but like Kyle said, just in terms of being an every down back, um, the, the addition of Isaiah Spiller, they still have Joshua Kelly, Larry Roundtree. Like These are all guys that have kind of rotated in a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think Eckler gets, needs to get faded a little bit. And guys that are behind him in the ranking that I found was Derrick Henry, um, Harris, and Dalvin. And yes, like the, I think those guys are, are above where Austin Eckler should be drafted. For me, it's Javante Williams in Denver. Like, Ooh, I, that's I, a, that's I, don't, I don't get what happened. I'm seeing these rankings. They're like top 10, yeah. top 11. I'm like, 11th, 10th? I don't, yeah. I don't even know who the guy is. Like, I, look, I mean, he had a fine, right. He had a fine yeah, season yeah. last year. But like I'm talking about like the names we are so consistently McCaffrey and Henry and Cook. Like, We've had a long list of these names for a long time. For somebody to jump out like that quickly into the top 10, and it's a lot more projections of what he can probably do with Russell Wilson and a different Denver team and everything else. But if you really want to point to Denver's team and say what could be the reason why the Broncos don't have as much success in the AFC West, it's because their running backs aren't as good as everybody else's. So Javante Williams is my pick. I don't get where this came from. He's the top 10 running back all of a sudden. Yeah, if they had actually parted ways with – uh, Gordon, we could have that. We could have that talk. But Melvin Gordon's still there. And as much as I banged my head off the wall last season, and Kyle can attest to it, <laughs> you know, Javante's the better runner, especially at this point in their careers. And it's, but it's still a split, you know. And, and it is a smart way to run a team. You don't want to run a young running back into the ground that early. Um, but I imagine it'll sway a little bit towards Javante this year, but not enough to make him RB one worthy. Um, and it's going to frustrate people because he's probably going to have a great yards per carry. He's going to have a great you know, yak. Like he's going to have some great numbers, but you're going to have Melvin Gordon poaching a touchdown every other week and, and getting some work where you wish he was getting it. Chad and I literally had this conversation after we were sitting down enjoying some nice watermelon sours from Frog Alley. Frog Alley sponsor us. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I would love Frog Alley. But, um, the, the split last year was, what, 45-55 in, in Melvin or 
um, Javante's favor, depending on the game, it's going to be like 60, 65 at best. So right. I, you guys have the nail on the head with Javante. Like that's a great call. I, I honestly never even thought about him because um, when I'm looking at my mock drafts, he's not even close, but he is getting so much love across the board that it's crazy. Again, I'm also, I think I called it out late in the season with, with Russell going to Denver. I think they're better, but I don't think they're going to be able to, to get leads and run the ball. And that doesn't help them. They're going to no. be playing from behind. Not in that division. You're nope. not going to get a lot of leads. A lot, of, At least a lot of safe leads. Underrated. Underrated running backs. Uh, who wants to chat? I'm going to start with you. Underrated running back. Yeah, I'm going to go with A.J. Dillon. Um, I think we saw it last year. It's still going to be a committee. And, you know, can Green Bay feed two mouths all season in the backfield? I don't know. Um, but with the departure of Devontae Adams, that's a big hole in an offense that still does have the back-to-back reigning MVP in Aaron Rodgers. So if they're going to continue being a, a top offense, who's going to make up those yards? It's you know guys like Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon hopefully get more incorporated in the passing game. Uh, so A.J. Dillon, you know, I was a little surprised when I saw the rankings come out at how, how far he had dropped because by the end of the year – Last year, even with Aaron Jones playing, he was a pretty consistent RB20. And right now he's he's closer to RB30 in a lot of these uh, mock drafts and rankings. So um, he's the younger back. I think he's perfectly built for Green Bay, especially later in the season when your fantasy football matters the most. He's going to be the guy that if you go to Lambeau, he's going to punch you in the face. Um, and we saw that, especially at the end of the year, at his ability to find the end zone. He's got a, a uh, Aaron Rodgers as a trust with him. And it's just perfect smash mouth football for that for that team. So AJ Dillon's a guy that if you can find him in the late, I'm gonna say like the seventh, eighth round, if you can get AJ Dillon, maybe he falls into your flex or as your first backup running back, that could pay huge dividends because if Aaron Jones goes down, you now have an RB one. Like that's how good a guy of AJ Dillon is. Is he's he's more than a handcuff because he's going to be able to get you points week in and week out, even with a healthy Jones. If he somehow becomes the the starter without Aaron Jones, you're looking at a guy that's going to be a beast. Um, I'm going to fanboy a little bit on this one. I I I still think James Cook is going to take over the backfield at some point, so you're going to want him on your bench. I think Devin Singletary is my underrated back this year, and the reason I say that is how. They finally started using Devin appropriately last year and stopped sending him up the middle on every single run. Motor Singletary is not an up the middle kind of running back. He is a he is a he needs to try to get to get you on the outside and, and have leverage on you because his his um his single step cut is is insane. But when you look at what uh, Singletary did towards the end of the year, um, three of his last four games he finished with over eighty eight with over eighty rushing yards, and then four five his last five games, including playoffs, I'm throwing out there, he had at least one touchdown. Um, so that offense should be good. It's a much improved offensive line. Um, if everybody can save healthy with Roger Saffold, a, a very good run blocker. Um, and Ken Dorsey has been very adamant about making sure that the run game gets established in, in this offense, um, but also not relying on it. So he's, he's been pretty upfront with saying some of the stuff that they learned last year was that they tried to force the run so much and tried to just pound it up the middle. Well, they can't do that. They have to make sometimes flip the script and let Josh Allen open the run game. So I'm actually going with Motor. And then also when you look at his um, strength schedule, it's the eighth easiest. The Bills have a cakewalk of a schedule this year. Um, some very bad uh, rush defenses that they're going up against. So um, I think Motor's going in a lot of late rounds um, in the draft. You know, he's essentially like RB20s. Um, so you're looking at him probably late seven, eight, nine rounds, eighth, ninth round. So I kind of like Motor Singletary to to give you that massive value play as an RB two, um, especially with how much he, how much crap I've given him, um, and how much how much all running backs for the Bills have gotten because of Josh Allen. It's so funny, you guys picked Dylan and Singletary because I thought back for both of their seasons recently. In comparison, you guys know how much I loved Aaron Jones last year. I thought, wow, you know, Jones and Singletary had a great year last year. I'm like, wow, oh, these stats are not what I thought they mm-hmm. were for both of those players in 2000. They- Mentally, like I thought, because you win games sometimes with these players, you think they did well because they helped you do well, and you go back, you're like, 
not as well as I. Well, did. didn't they both come on like towards the end of the year? They actually both started like you're like, oh, this is the running back that I thought. Didn't AJ have a couple really good games at the end of the year, and then obviously Singletary had a great playoff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. AJ Dillon, uh, end of the year was he he'd overtaken the more productive back from Aaron Jones. Like he was getting yeah. more work, more rushes. Wasn't on the field as much, which always worries you as a fantasy manager where you're like, my guy is not on the field. I can't get points, but he just maximized his opportunities. And so hopefully is now a, I believe, a third year back. Uh, Hopefully this is going to be the time where they're like, all right, we're going to use these guys evenly and make sure. I mean, if you guys are in the red zone, who are you giving the ball to? Right. 180 pound Aaron Jones or a freaking bulldozer. Like. (laughs) Seems like common sense to me. I do like Aaron Jones's pass catching ability better, and uh, Rogers finds a does a great way of finding him when they get near the the, uh, the red zone. But I think uh, again, when you, when you think about who their pass catchers are now without Devonte Adams, why not get creative and put AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones on the field together? Like those are two of your more reliable guys. Who's gonna Who's gonna go out for a route? Who's gonna run the ball? Who's gonna block? Like. I think that offense could have a lot of fun if you maximize both of those players to try to make up for the void of Devontae Adams. One day a coach is going to bring back the wishbone offense. We're all yeah, going to look around and be like, wait a second. We could have used two running backs in the field at the same time. Why didn't yep. oh, the 80s Oklahoma team really <laughs> figured it out in the late Nebraska teams? Uh, I want to give you my – because this is my one of my favorite plays of the summer. This is one of my picks where I, like, I don't want people in my league to hear this because that's how excited I am about this underrated running back. And I'll go as far to say this is the most underrated running back preseason in the last 10 years in fantasy football. What? Can I look real quick? Yeah, you go ahead. You guys think about this while I tell you about Mohawk Honda. Because I got a tease like that. I got to make sure I give love to our sponsors before we give a tease like that. Mohawk Honda, it's a place to trade in your vehicle. If you're looking for that great ride this summer, a championship ride if you're playing fantasy football, maybe you're getting ready for those football tailgates this fall and more. Mohawk Honda is the spot for you. Take advantage of that strange. <laughs> that strange spot right now. The supply chain is so weird, but you can take advantage of it. Trade in your vehicle, get the money back you paid for it years later, and maybe even money in your pocket and a new upgraded vehicle. Mohawk Honda, Glenville, New York. Shout out to Greg Johnson, Cam McKenna, Brian McKenna, Lindsey Harrington, John in service, MJ, the VIP Morales, man. I can go through everybody over there. Cannot wait for us to be back in September for a live show for Mohawk Honda. Wherever you're listening across upstate New York, it's your vehicle. It's worth a drive to get it right and get money in your pocket. It's Mohawk Honda, where they always go out of their way to please you. Uh, for our, our audio audience, you can see Chet get excited. Chet feels like he knows this. So I'm going to let you guess before I give it. Who do you think this is? Can I can I give a, a hint to you? Yes. Or ask you a bit? Is there some controversy around the pronunciation of his name? He was going Clyde Edwards Hilaire. No, I was going Travis Etienne. No, 0 for 2, but <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to give some serious love to ETN. ETN. Yeah, uh, ETN, ETN, whatever the, the only reason I even pause, and of course now my internet's going to kick right before, right? Uh, the reason I pause is because this guy has two A's in his first name, I believe. So like if you live in Syracuse, you might put a, like a little whiny Rashad instead of Rashad or Rashad. Rashad. Any. Any. Wow. Now, here's the thing with Rashad Penny, right? Former first-round draft pick, former first-round draft pick in Seattle, got hurt. Former top-five finisher in the Heisman Trophy. Top-five player in the country coming out of San Diego State. That is Marshall Falk territory. Now, if you've had Rashad Penny on your fantasy football team of any year except 2021, you're like, he stinks, guys. He is terrible. People have been hyping this guy up for years, and he's never been there. The problem is he got hurt. You know, like, it's not like he hasn't been productive, which I guess when you're hurt, you're not productive, but like injuries are injuries. When he was finally healthy last year, he was the highest scoring running back the final seven weeks of the regular season last year. Seven weeks, not like two, not like four, seven. And we can all agree they don't have a quarterback. And Chris Carson retired. Now look, Kyle's boy. Kenneth Walker, the third's back there. That's right. Michigan State's own back there. He's a rookie. There's still some uncertainty about that. Well, you're telling me Rashad Penny is a top scorer for the final six to seven weeks, a former first-round draft pick. They don't have a quarterback. This dude's going like 25th with running backs. 25th! 
He could be a top 10, hell, top 8 score. There's my boot. Wager, put that on the board, drop it. I got Rashad Penny as a top 10 running back this year. I cannot believe how low he is right now. I love the auto tune on that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he throws it on my screen with like a what? <laughs> I see, I like Rashad Penny. I just, Kenneth Walker, I think, is going to overtake that backfield. Like, Ooh. he. He has done more from – obviously, I'm a Michigan State fan, so I follow, like, what some of these guys do and what they're doing. There's nothing but good things. They are extremely impressed with how he's been able to catch the ball. He can pass block, um, and obviously, he is a absolute speedster running, what was it, like a 4 2 8 40 at the draft. I think that's going to be Kenneth Walker's backfield by the end of the year. That's my yeah. only concern with Penny. Right. Yeah, if they had went out and drafted a guy like Walker, who was the second guy off the board? Yeah. Yeah, for running back, I mean. Um, so, yeah, if they hadn't put that kind of capital in there, I'm with you. I mean, we saw finally what Rashad Penny can be when healthy and gets a chance. But, yeah, it's just how far do you reach on a guy who could be in a competition for his job? So that's the only concern I have. It could pay huge dividends, like God says. You could be – because if you, you don't have to pay that high up, you know, like – if you well, guys, what's the highest you would go? You're talking like round? How high yeah. would I draft him? It's we'll say a 12 team league. What's the highest you would go on Rashad Penny? Fifth. Yeah, I was thinking fourth or fifth would be like my. If you're in a super competitive league, running backs go early. You go wide receiver heavy, and you're like, I got to make sure I have somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Rashad Penny might be in that. He's like in that that upper tier of. Guys that get kind of like fall fall later in the draft, you know, like I get the same kind of boat as like Chase Edmonds, who's getting a lot of buzz, but mm-hmm. also in the backfield that you're not sure exactly how it's going to play out. Um, yeah, no, that's a good one, man. It could, it could absolutely be a slam dunk, or it could be a, you know, you're crying in November when when uh, when White is is getting 20, 25 carries a game. That's right. That, you got me again, Penny freaking Walker. Yeah. Them all. <laughs> I think the crazy part too about this year's running back situation is we talked at length last year about how bad the running back room was going to be. So how heavy like the start of running backs would be. When you look at like some of the standard tier list of like who is going where, you've got Swift, Barkley, Jones, Kamara, Fournette, Connor, Elliott, all under 10 those are all like the 10th and below ranked running back so it's weird how it feels because of how like elite that tier one is if you don't get one of those tier one guys what are you losing at between tier two and three it feels like that this year literally did a complete 180 and now it is well there's plenty of running backs unless you get one of these four guys everybody else is on an even playing field so it, it literally feels like it completely flipped from last year yeah, yeah, I feel like for the last few years, it's been like if you didn't get that top four pick, you were just so far behind yep. with like the guarantees of Derrick Henry, CMC, uh, Dalvin Cook. Like they were just like 25 points a week, just like book it, you know, like nothing to worry about. And everybody else was just like grinding to fill their positions. But this year, even those guys are now all coming off these like, you know, like on the apps when you're on your fantasy app and it has like a news explanation, yeah. and you're like, shit, what what happened now? You know, what's wrong? And there's just like these, you know, injury concerns that those guys are getting up there in years. And like, yeah, now how much do they have? How much tread is left on those tires? I think Kyle had mentioned the quarterback position might have been the toughest for picking a breakout. I would argue this of any ranking for our preseason is the toughest category oh. to find a breakout running back is potentially a season-changing draft move. Like, if you get this right, this is the most important. Uh, I'll put the pressure on Chet to lead it off. Who is your breakout running back this year? So, I agree. And this is where you could, you know, fudge the lines between breakout and sleeper. You know, like, those are the guys, like guys are saying, if you you get this guy late in your draft, that's where I kind of, like, I labeled that as a sleeper. This guy's not going to be there late in drafts. He's you're going to have a chance to get him. Might be available in round two. <clears throat> might go at the end of the first round. I think this is the year that DeAndre Swift breaks out. Um, last year we saw what he can be, but he was still kind of like 
kind of held back. You know, they, they didn't want to overuse him. He then bangs up his shoulder, I believe, on Thanksgiving, and that drastically changed his usage for the rest of the way. Dan Campbell is coaching for his career, right? This is now year two yeah. for Dan the man Campbell who wants to eat your knees. Um, <laughs> Matt, Patricia coached, Matt Patricia coached two years, got fired. Jim Caldwell made the freaking playoffs, fired after year three. Jim Schwartz somehow made it four years and got fired. Rob Marinelli, two years, fired. Steve Mariucci, two years, fired. Like, dude, it's now for you, Dan Campbell. You guys were not nearly good enough last year, even though I thought you played better than expectations and you were in some games. You were leading the Rams who won the freaking Super Bowl. But now what's holding you back from unleashing what could be the most talented running back in the NFL? He can run. He can catch. He's amazing with the ball in his hands after he gets it. Yes, Jamal Williams is still there. Yes, they signed Justin Jackson. I think that this is the year where DeAndre Swift, full steam ahead, he has a, a realistic chance to be RB1. Like, it's not out of the round wow. of possibility. Number and one? He could be number one. And you could get him at the end of your first or early second. And so that's my my breakout guy. I think Swift makes the big jump that we've been we've been waiting for. You want to go next, guys, or you want me to go? I have one, but both of these make me want to puke. So please oh, just prepare yeah. yourselves with the. Oh, I don't mine, like. Mine makes you want to vomit too if it makes you feel any better. All right, good. So we might be on the same thought here. Like somebody who can really. Here's what I thought on the breakouts for running backs. I like the guys who are in their contract years because, especially with a running back, that is so important for potentially what the future is. Now, one guy is still technically under contract at the end of the year, but everybody knows they're more than likely going to let him test free agency because the contract when he signed it years ago was such a mess. The other guy I, has a new other coach. You have the same one guy. I think, I think we have the same one. All right, go ahead and say it. No, you go. Um, I was going to go either Zeke or Josh Jacobs nope, were my okay. two. Ooh, ooh, All yeah, right. So both aren't good. great. I'm going to, I'm going to combine wait. both there. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now I'm confused on the category. You're saying Zeke's a breakout or Zeke's going to be comeback player of the year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here's why I say breakout for Zeke because, like, Zeke is going, like, 20th, isn't he? Isn't I he, like, know. 19th, 20th? You got here. Right? Like, so here's the thing with Zeke. I think Zeke could be a top six running back again. 100%. Like, he's been there before, but, my God, he was so bad last year. Like, that final two-month stretch. I will not be fooled again. Right? Not. This is the thing with the running backs. Like he is going to go so low in draft because everybody and including me is going to have the mindset of like, dude, I'm not doing this again with Zeke. Like I'm not letting him. And then all of a sudden there is a chance because similar to our quarterback edition with Baker Mayfield, like I like a pissed off Baker. I like when Zeke has stuff to play for when Zeke Elliott was at Ohio state and it was the big stage. He played better than he's ever played before when he was a rookie and he was going for the contract sort of because he held out later on, but that's good. Day. I don't know how that worked, but uh, he was good. Now it's potentially the end for Zeke. I cannot believe how old we are for the second time on these summer editions of Zeke and Dak are like year seven now. And year seven for a running back, like a lot of times that's it. Like your career is done. So Zeke knows that. So I'd say he has potentially top six. And Josh Jacobs, same thing. Like that's not John Gruden anymore. The rumors that John Gruden wanted to take Josh Jacobs like at the 10th pick that draft. Like he wanted to take him higher. They didn't do his first round option. So he's a free agent no matter what. And all that offense there, I mean, someone's got to get those goal line touches. I believe he's top four in the NFL since his career started for carries. That's a pretty good stat for Josh Jacobs. So I combined mine. I can see Zeke and Jacobs combined both being top 10 running backs where a lot of fantasy managers do no longer see those guys as that type of running back anymore. Yeah, the thing about Zeke that gives me optimism is I think his crazy owner, Jerry Jones, who is signing his game checks is going to make sure he gets work. He's not going to give yeah. those checks to a guy who gets 10 touches. He's getting paid to get 20 to 25 to 30 touches a game. And he, I think he came out in a press conference and said, Zeke's our workhorse. Like, yeah, Tony Pollard's a great talent. He's good, but we're paying him. We're paying Zeke five times as much as he's going to earn it. You know, like that's the kind of guy jerry jones is and he's also the kind of guy that will pick up the phone and call mike mccarthy's bum ass and say yo give the ball to zeke i'm paying <laughs> zeke 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I, I agree. I think he is a guy that's being faded way too much, and that um, this might be the end. Like, this, this might be like the you know the final scene of the football movie where he laces it up for one last time and blows everything when he tries to score a touchdown. But like, I think this is going to be his year to just go all out, and prove it that last year was was more of a fluke that he's not falling off. My guy. Um... Oh, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to. I think this is Saquon's year. Ooh. Oh, man, triple vomit from all of us. Yep. I I hate the Giants team, but when you look at what they added to that offensive line with Feliciano, the first-round pick, and they added another really strong run blocker, that offensive line, is, which is what the Giants' Achilles heel has been for forever next to Daniel Jones, um, is massively improved. And then I was I was – I've always been trying to think of, do I want Saquon in my drafts this year? So, like, he's going in, like, the second or third round usually. Um, and I came across an interesting uh, an interesting stat last year. Um, so, when Barkley, in five games last season, when Barkley played a full snap share with Daniel Jones under center, he averaged 16.2 points per game. Ooh. And that was – that's not terrible. And you think – that was him coming off of what was it two years ago? His ankle. Then he tore his ACL. But this could be the the year. And I and I'm trying also not to buy into any of the Giants training camp stuff. Is uh, Saquon's impressing, guys? It's the Giants defense. Like let's let's <laughs> let's calm down. I mean, you all Chet Chet tweeted it out on his uh, Twitter. He we uh, that whole media staff uh, hyped up a free rusher that led up on Daniel Jones and said Daniel Jones evading the sack. No, he's wearing a red jersey, and he debated it. Like, chill. But <laughs> I think this is going to be Saquon's here. I mean, you can pick Saquon up in late seconds, early thirds. Um, he could be a steal. I think he can be a top three back. Um, but just he, He's talented. Nobody can deny his leg strength. Nobody can deny his speed. Um, it's all going to be about how he comes off the ACL and everything. So um, Barkley's my guy. Middle, middle of the pack, strength of schedule. Um, Oh, kind of going up against a couple teams in division that don't have the best run defenses in um, Dallas and Washington. I think the Eagles have a pretty good rush defense, so we'll see what happens there. But um, I, I think this could be Saquon's bounce back year to, to come back into uh, top, I think, three, but I think to play a safe top five fantasy conversation. I like it. I like that as well. Saquon, you frustrate us all so much. But back to your I point, think Kyle, like injury. your own category, by the way. That's right. <laughs> I think you guys both just did comeback player of the year. Like, don't screw this again. We, we misunderstood the assignment on that one. <laughs> All right, we won't screw this one up. Deep sleeper, yeah. somebody who is way off the radar. You're going to use a draft pick on, but before we get to it, Johnstone Supply and Troy, 518 272 5922. Stay cool all summer long with our friends at Johnstone Supply and True. Johnstone Supply and Troy, or True, wherever it might be. <laughs> Uh, if you're holding the fantasy football draft at your house, make sure your friends are cool during the draft. You want to hear people complaining about how bad their team is and then how much they're sweating during the draft. Get a new AC unit, Johnstone Supply and Troy. Check them out on Facebook, Johnstone Supply NY. Shout out to our guy, George, always with us from day one. Awesome guy. If you see him in the store, chat it up with him. He's a big sports fan. Shout out to all those guys, Kev and James and Fish and everybody over at Johnstone Supply and Troy. If you got that fantasy football team picked, you got to get that lawn duty done, those summer projects done. You've always got those competitive prices on 6th Avenue in Troy. Johnstone Supply in Troy. We appreciate their support. Go out and support them this summer. Grab what you need from those guys. Johnstone Supply NY on Facebook. All right, Ray Ray. Let's hopefully you and I get this right this time. Who is your deep sleeper at the running back position? Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, that is a fact because he is on my do not draft list. I will not draft him. <laughs> nope. No, thank you. Um, it's my boy. It's Kenneth Walker. Um, I, I know that people are saying that Rashad Penny is going to be the number one back, uh, but Kenneth Walker, I think is going to be the <laughs> steal. That... <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Kenneth Walker, in my opinion, is going to be the steal of the draft. I think he's going to overtake that back to the week four or five. Um, I know that they have no quarterback, so that couldn't mean that they line up the box, but, um, I see Kenneth Walker playing mul multiple hats. He's going to be a safety valve for who, whichever quarterback, um, is in there throwing the ball. He's going to get some touches out of the backfield. Um, and you're going to get Kenneth Walker late 10th, 11th, 12th round. He's going to be there. Um, so Kenneth Walker is by far my my sleeper pick. And when you look at um, how his schedule is, yeah, it seems tough. But I think that's also going to play into Rashad Penny's weakness. And 
can he stay healthy? Um, what is what does this team look like if it gets banged up and everything like that? So um, Kenneth Walker is going to be my guy to to grab super late just to stash on the bench, wait for him to take over that backfield. Like I said, week three, week four or five. I like it. I like it. I'm I'm going to stick with Kyle and I'm going to go with a rookie. And it's also going to put a smile on Kyle's face. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. How many years will I uh, continue <laughs> to get excited about a Bills running back? I do not know. This might be my final straw. Um, I got way overhyped for Devin Singletary. I got overhyped for Zach Moss. But the reason I prefer a guy like James Cook over a guy like Kenneth Walker, the offense. This offense is going to score a lot of points. This offense is led by the best quarterback in football. So, and the other way I look at it is, you know, as Kyle will attest to, in Brandon Bean they trust. This is a team that is not even a step away from the Super Bowl. They are Super Bowl ready. And they decided in the second round to draft James Cook. They're not going to waste that pick. They think James Cook can make this offense even better. We're going to see James Cook play. And if James Cook becomes the pass-catching running back that the Bills haven't had yet with Josh Allen, this guy could become a serious problem for defenses and become a problem for fantasy teams if you don't have him because that's what the potential is. We have not seen one of the top offenses in the NFL have a consistent fantasy running back yet. Do I think that's going to be James Cook? I don't know if it's this year. Maybe it's next year. Maybe it's the year after that. But if he can be that guy, man, that could be a huge sleeper that you could get at a massive discount later in a draft. And I think I think it also when you look at James Cook, it's the most complete roster top to bottom too. So, like, there, I think there's going to be those blowout games that the Bills have because the defense is literally going to hold them to zero points. But James Cook is also going to get in the backfield early in the season on those second team reps with um, Case Keenum at quarterback, and all of a sudden he's just going to show out. And then the Bills are going to be like, oh, let's give him a little bit more snaps. And all of a sudden you just start sprinkling in James Cook. Then he comes in on a third and 15, takes a screen pass 40 yards, and it's like, okay, this is his backfield. It's his. Uh, dude, yeah. I am very high on James Cook. I, I would reach. He's my reach running back this year is to go steal him and sit him on the bench and just patiently wait because there's going to be weeks where you're going to be able to play him even in a flex role. I think he'll play a flex role early on, too. I I love that pick. I just didn't want to continue to go down my fandom route. <laughs> you did. You as I did. As I did kind of Wait, hold on. Dating back to our previous episode, uh, Kirk Cousins. So we had Michigan State there. We had Josh Allen, the Bills. Of course, you're not going to say any of the Bills were overrated. And you go, oh, that's only one quarter. Yeah. Kyle, frick off. <laughs> Frick off. You know what, though? Like, your mindset, Chet, and Kyle's mindset, I think we're all in the same thought of a person who's in a really good position to make something big happen. Like, you went with Walker because of the success of the Seahawks running backs at the end of last year. Uh, you went with Cook because the Bills are going to be in position to have success. This is one of these things where you look back at 2021 and then think, like, okay, this spot had a lot of success in fantasy. But they maybe are making a change, but it's such an outlier in the history of fantasy football. You're like, yeah, this this makes a lot of sense. This guy is a fifth round running back out of BYU. His name is Tyler Aglier. I'm going to put a French accent. Cam, I'm sure would be very excited about that attempted <laughs> French right there. Uh, Tyler Aglier is a BYU running back who plays for the second time a deep sleeper coming from the Atlanta Falcons. Now I say that because. What the hell happened last year with Cordell Earl Patterson, right? Like a wide receiver for what, guys? Seven weeks was the number one running back. So yeah. is he still? Why did they draft this kid? Like he's got to be the guy, right? So that's my thought. Maybe the rookie's going to get all his carries. That's my deep sleeper running back. Yeah, because not only was the was the Cordell Patterson thing just we hadn't seen that before a wide receiver make that successful transition. He's in his thirties. Cordell Patterson's not a young buck. I believe he's like 31 or 32. Um, I don't think he'll completely disappear, but there's just no way there's going to be another season where Cordell Patterson's going to be getting all those touches. He, by the way, confirmed is 31. Holy sh... Boys, it's starting to get weird where we're talking about guys being too old when it's the same year I was born. <laughs> shit. 
Well, we, past his well, prime and on past my prime as well. But um, no, that's a great pick, guys. He's another guy. Kyle, I almost brought that up. I didn't want to interrupt. Jesus. Ron Miller is recruiting Odell Beckham. No, thank you. Nope. Nope. Why not? Nope. Nope. Why? Where would we play him? Uh, on offense. <laughs> <laughs> I I just don't like it. I mean, way, if he's just chasing another ring, I mean, dude. Sit him on the bench, sure, but I don't want him on the field. He just – you like know. you like Isaiah McKenzie over just because you played Call of Duty with Isaiah McKenzie. <laughs> you like him more than if, Odell? If we lined up three wide, yes, Odell over Isaiah. But if we're gonna line up two wide with a slot receiver, Isaiah all day. I will put Odell in the slot over Isaiah. Ooh. Yeah. By the way, LG Air is from BYU. For all we know, he could be 31 years old as well. Coming out of <laughs> he, already did his, he already did his mission and his That's right. yeah. 2021 All American. Uh, we will say that for our wide receiver talk. If maybe a injured Odell Beckham Jr. could be a deep sleeper for people, well, you'll take a flyer on him if he's not back till November. We've got so much more content for you here on Godzilla Media as you prepare for your NFL fantasy football draft. Make sure to check on the playlist if you're on our YouTube side, if you're on our Spotify or Apple side. Just continue to search through. This is all the info you need as you prep for your fantasy football draft this coming August or September. We got more content on the way here on We Talk Fantasy. September, guys. September. Don't draft early. Hey, boys. Football's back Saturday. <laughs>